it, you know, it's a, you know, it's it's a matter of constant uh, concern to think about the future. And even Albert Einstein used to say, "Who cares about the future if it will happen, no matter what?" But I think it is very important for us in this time to think about the future, mostly because we need to build the future rather than just waiting for the future to happen. So we have the great opportunity, the greatest opportunity, I might say, in the post-pandemic world, because it looks like planets have aligned. It looks like many of the reasons why we were always thinking that it is just impossible to foster change now are ready uh, for us to, to, to really embrace in such a change. Now, let me tell you briefly about what I believe are the key challenges that higher education is facing today. The first one, which is very important, is that we will need to adapt much faster than expected the higher education ecosystem in our countries towards what I refer to as the new digital economy and society. You know, the pandemic truly accelerated the digitalization of our economies and societies, and no matter what, we will need to adapt uh, higher education to such a new environment. Secondly, I think still it remains a significant challenge that has to do with access, equitable access, equitable retention and success in higher education, especially for the many in the world who have not benefited from it. That's what I refer to as the need to leverage um, a, um, a, and deliver better and more inclusive education. I think it is fundamental to think about that. A third one is how do we respond to the growing demand that is not met, but shifting demographics? I think this is going to be something that we will need to seriously think about because no longer the students are the students that used to be. No longer we think about the student as the one who just finished high school. It is ready to be four years and an immersion and then getting out. That is a definition is completely outdated and we will need to really think seriously about the ones again, which are not the conventional students and the many in the world for which access to higher education has been just a dream. Fifth and fourth, fourth, I'm sorry. It is precisely the need to find the right balance of, I might say quality provision, but more important, relevance of higher education between the public and the private uh, sectors. You know, this dichotomy that has been made between the public and private providers, it is becoming blurred. And no matter what, we need to assure, despite of the type of institutions, we need to assure that we provide the best education possible, which is both good quality, but more important, relevant. And then the fifth one has to do, how do we embrace the idea of international dimension, global dimension in an age in which it looks like that is a bad thing, in an age in which it looks like the national against the international becomes this tension that always we need to address. And then finally, and very important, we in higher education, institutions and systems, how we really become flexible and adaptive learning organizations. There is too much that we learned in the pandemic about the many things that we do wrong. Fernando was making reference to them that definitely need to be addressed. We need to have universities which are much more flexible, much more student oriented, and more important, much more adaptable to the realities of the future. Now, being said that, I think uh, at the end of the day, I think we need to think about what is the education uh, uh, purpose about? I truly believe, and this is what we believe at Qatar Foundation, that we should aspire to build the better future of our societies by nurturing capable, well-rounded, and value-driven human beings who are committed to lead and shape the communities in which they live. And the only way we can do it is if we provide them with the most possible better education, which is personalized, which allows them to make decisions about their own journey, and which is relevant. And in order to do that, we need to have inclusive and innovative ecosystems. And that's what we are trying to do at Qatar Foundation. You know, the, this ecosystem of more than 20 educational institutions from kindergarten to doctoral education, having top level universities in one single place and adding the dimension of research and more important, the dimension of 
community engagement are, in my opinion, the fundamental elements that will make possible that dream of a better education for the future. Do we have a big challenge ahead? Absolutely. Is that something um, impossible to address? I don't think so. I am very optimistic that we really can achieve that. Planets have aligned, opportunities for change are ahead, and I truly believe that future is something that we will be able to build, a better future that next generations will need. Let me just finish with one quote that always I like to use from Paul Valéry. 93 years ago, he said, what it concerns us about the future today is that the future no longer is what it used to be. And in today's world, 93 years after, the future no longer will be what it used to be. And higher education institutions will have to be up to the standards of a world that nobody can anticipate how it will be, but there is no doubt that it will be much more different than the world in which all of us were educated. Though we need to change, we have no time, and this is the greatest opportunity of our time to make that shift in higher education.